Hi, my name is Terry Wright. I'm the director of Berwick Community TV, and we are here today for the second episode of Updates from the Town Manager's Desk. I'm here with Steve Eldridge, and we're going to find out a little bit about what's happened since the last time we spoke. Um, the roads, I see they've started Pine Hill Road. Thank goodness. Huh? It's been a long wait for most people this summer. Uh, this is the last leg of uh, this year's paving. Uh, they reclaimed it uh, last Friday and uh, doing some filling in with some gravel and bringing it up to its level. Uh, and they will start paving tomorrow. We were hoping it would pave today, but um, it was raining, so they held off. Uh, and they'll be here tomorrow and get that taken care of over the day and a half. And then they're coming back on Monday and they're going to grind the rest of uh, Pine Hill mm -hmm. all the way down towards Sullivan. And that should be paved, hopefully, if the weather holds up th that week. So we'll have that all completed. Um, I've had a lot of phone calls about roads and uh, so many of them need work. But uh, what we have planned for next year uh, is um, we're going to be doing part of uh, Cranberry uh, Meadow Road and we'll be doing uh, Cemetery Road and hopefully parts of uh, River Road and um, I think that will probably do it because that's quite a length we have to do there. Yeah, I was going to say Little River Road's pretty bad. Pretty bad. It's, we got some real, uh, real bad sections and we're going to try to keep the sections that are still holding up pretty good and just get rid of where uh, it's, it's collapsing and we'll build that up and then we'll come back the following year and do what they call a shim and overlay, which should keep it for another 10 years, hopefully, or 12. So that's where we are on our road schedule for now. And we do have a five to 10 year program. And every year uh, when we put it out to bid, sometimes the prices come in a little higher than we expected. So we have to put things off. Uh, but this year we finished Wentworth. We did travel there on that uh, in the spring. They finished up uh, Beach Ridge Road and also Pond Road. So those have been rebuilt and, uh, and completed paving. Uh, Logan, Ro Logan Street, we have to come back and uh, do a travel layer on that, and that will complete that. Um, so uh, we're plugging away a little bit at a time, but it's, it's very expensive. So yeah. we'll get as much done as we can. And the public has been great. They've supported us for adding more money to our paving budget. So hopefully they'll see the fruits of our labor that uh, the crew does a good job in ditching and repairing it for the uh, pavers. And yes. um, so I think we're, we're in good shape. And if you haven't been on some of these roads, you should travel them. Uh, Diamond Hill is, is a road we completed several years ago. And it's awesome compared to what it was. And uh, Worcester Road um, is, it looks really nice as well. So should last. Well, I kind of look at it as a savings on my car because yeah. <laughs> Lord knows I do a lot on that just yeah. from the upkeep for the year. Yeah, Pine Hill, everybody's complained about Pine Hill and uh, it's just a, it's a very big project. Um, we'll come back and do another section of that next year as well, but not anywhere near as long as the section we're doing this year. So. Well, that's the worst part of it is where we're doing this year. Yeah, that was the worst part. We're trying to get the worst first. Yes. So. Okay. Well, that's a great news. Yeah. We're really happy to hear that we'll have a nice new road for the wintertime, particularly yes. for the plowing purposes. Yep. All right. How about the parking lot? Uh, I've had a few people call about the parking lot over here next to the town office. Um, and we had some real issues with that. It was coming apart in sections. Uh, there were areas that uh, were people in wheelchairs or using uh, any kind of a handicapped accessible vehicle uh, had a hard time getting turning around and getting out. Uh, and we also, part of the Envision Berwick uh, concept was to create more parking area. So we gained 16 parking spaces there. Uh, it's turned out uh, much better with a better turning radius so people can get in and out easier. We closed up one section to pe uh, keep people from uh, going in right around the corner there. So there'll be an in and out in the section on Sullivan and then Eleanor Drive will only have an exit. So I think that's so far what I've seen, it's been working really well. Um, so that's, that's a start, at least on some of our downtown projects that we have. Well, I can tell you, it's walking, it's much safer. Yeah. Because it, it was pretty dangerous in some areas, yeah. I thought about people it who was. had trouble walking. Yeah, so it's, hopefully it's, we won't have any issues with it. But. Awesome. 
All right, CDB grant. The CDBG is, is grant is a community development block grant. It comes out of the federal government for HUD and every state gets a certain amount of money and it's always been decreasing over the last 15, 20 years. Uh, but we're in a position this year where we will send a letter of intent to, to apply. It's a $300,000 grant. Uh, we have to come up with a 20% match, but it will be for downtown revitalization. So we'll be working on sidewalks and some of the intersections. Um, and hopefully 300,000, believe it or not, does not go very far. But it's, at least it's a start. Um, and, um, and we should qualify. We've, the Envision Berwick and the town in general has done an excellent job on preparing with surveys and studies that they've done. So that puts us in a very good position and hopefully uh, we'll have somebody at Prime that will partner with us and make it even stronger. Oh, um, great. Okay, um, so Prime, since you mentioned yeah. that, why don't we uh, look at well, what's going on there? Prime, as everybody knows, the, the larger lot, the 7.8 acres, that has been all cleaned up and, and uh, turned back to uh, Fund of Jupiter. Uh, they've been working uh, over the last few weeks on the big parking lot, and they actually finished that last night. Uh, so that's all done and cleaned up, and uh, we all have left is the um, Blue Sort building, and they are in there now doing that. They have to remove some asbestos quite a bit actually along the walls. That's why you see it all buttoned up. There's no way anybody could, uh, that material can get out. Um, they should be done by the end of this month. Uh, and then they'll seal up the floor. There was some gas uh, vapors coming up through the floor. So they'll, they'll seal that up and, uh, and that will be it for the Blue Sort building. So uh, we've had some interest in that building uh, from several uh, people who want to have a business there. Again, we, when we're done, we'll be turning it over to uh, fund the Jupiter. That's the plan, probably not until the end of November, early December. Um, we have a uh, main company. He's a developer and contractor who's very interested in coming here. We uh, reached out to them in uh, March or April of this past year. and. Uh, they actually responded very quickly to us and they've been down quite a few times working with Quideri, our engineers who are doing the cleanup, asking questions, and uh, they've met with uh, the chairman, Tom and myself, and our planner and Rick Vandenberg. Um, so this, we're hoping, we have our fingers crossed, that uh, they plan to, hoping to purchase the whole, the whole lot and, and develop it. So. When I, as soon as that is done, I can announce who it is and what their plans are. They're very much a perfect company for what we are trying to do here um, and what the Envision Berwick group would like to do and see happen. So we're very excited that uh, their interest, but again, nothing's ever guaranteed. No, but we can not. hope that Mr. Cahaya from Fund of Jupiter and them can work out something. So that's exciting. That is very exciting. Yeah, it is. It, it would be really nice to see something Go in there. Yeah, we we have a lot of interest from outside companies who would like to cut, put you know restaurants, grocery stores, uh, fitness centers, things like that, and that's asking when they can start talking. And uh, Mr. Kai is a very busy man; he travels the world, and he hasn't been, gotten back to people. But um, hopefully, with if this happens, we'll have somebody in the state working okay. with them, yep. which will be really good. Okay. Fire station. I didn't have it on my list. I just wanted to bring everybody up to date. Uh, we uh, got our DEP permit so we can start breaking ground to put the road in, uh, the access road off Sullivan, and hopefully uh, that they could start on Monday. We hopefully get our, we have a 42 inch culvert that has to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, next week you'll see a lot of activity. The phone company finally showed up after hounding them for the last few months today. And so Monday we should see Renault uh, Industrial tearing down the Esterbrook School. That's what we've been waiting for. So that will be cleaned up. And then we met with the developer and the architects yesterday. And uh, they're saying that uh, by the time all the permitting and everything gets into place, we'll probably break ground in November, which is a bit later than I was hoping. It's been uh, tough having patience. We'd like to get that started. But we'll see some activity there uh, starting next week and into November and then all through the winter. So Fantastic. yeah, we're all excited about that. Yeah. 
All right, so new people in the town. Yeah, if you had, didn't get a chance to see her on BCTV, we have a new finance director, Lisa Vargas. She came from uh, Lyman, and she came with a tremendous skill set. She fits in well, uh, and she, uh, she's working hard and, uh, and loving her job because she's got, it's a little bit bigger community, um, so uh, a little bit more responsibility, more departments, more staffing. But uh, she jumped in feet first. And, uh, and she had experience with the Brownfield Group and yeah, developments did. and things like that. So yeah, she's really worked with franchise agreements before. Yeah. She's worked with Brownfield uh, Groups before. Um, so she came with some really good expertise under her belt. Yeah. And uh, we're very pleased yeah. to have her on board. And she'll be an active part of our next budget season, which is just around the corner. We'll start doing that. So we're excited about that. Yeah, and then we have a new uh, customer service person too. Yeah, Julie, you'll see her. She's a floater. Uh, she's another local person who, uh, who has caught on quite quickly, and we're yep. excited to have her on. Uh, we sometimes have that need because people take vacations or uh, they travel. Uh, we had a, a one a part-time person, Sheila, who takes quite a length of time off, so she'll fill in for her as well. Right. So it's, we're pleased to have her, and she's been a real asset for uh, Patty and her group. Yeah, very pleasant. If you get a chance to come in, just say hi to her. Yep. All right. Um, upcoming things that the uh, town is looking at. We had some, been having problems with our heating system uh, about. Five years ago, the town replaced the boiler, uh, which was quite expensive, I think around $70,000. Uh, but the piping that we have for the heating system is still 1938 vintage. Um, and we've been having breaks in the lines and uh, causing water damage and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we um, turned it off in late March, early April, so we wouldn't use it anymore. And we've been looking at uh, doing some uh, piping change and going to hot water versus steam, uh, maybe using um, heat pumps on some of the upper floors. Uh, but that's a $67,000 uh, expense, which we did not budget for this year. Some of the money will come from the Lena Clark Fund, uh, but it really wasn't planned this year. So we're hoping we can get through the winter without any problems, but uh, I'm not sure at this point. We turned it on yesterday and we had a few leaks, a few leaks so yeah. uh, our service person is going to come out and take a look at it. Um, the other thing that we had happen this uh, spring, which we weren't expecting, is our public works fuel tanks. We have two. One is diesel and one is gasoline. Every 10 years they come out and, uh, and have to have an inspection, the DEP. Uh, forces us to have that done so there's no leaks. Uh, our gas uh, gasoline tank, which is separate, of course, from our diesel, failed. Uh, and uh, it's too expensive to fix it. So we will plan in the spring to have um, uh, new tanks put in for that. Our diesel, they're coming out next week to uh, do some fixing on that. And hopefully it will pass its tests after they do that. And, and we'll get through the winter with the diesel. But right now, we're using something called WIC cards, which is uh, you go to the pumps and, and we get billed from a company after the fact. Like it's like, it operates like a credit card. But at the end of the year, uh, that company gets all our tax money back that we would spend or have spent. So basically, we're not able to use the fuel tank for fuel, but we can for the diesel. For diesel, yeah, gasoline. We, will, we uh, can't use it, and when they come out to test our diesel tank and do some minor repairs for that, uh, they're gonna, they'll suck out what we have left. There's always about 100 gallons left in the base, mm -hmm. but it's, it's uh, stuff you don't want to put in your right, tank. So they'll, they'll take it out uh, and seal it all up and, and file with the DEP that, that we've closed that tank for good. So, um, that's a little bit of money too, isn't it? Oh yes, that's another... Uh, Fifty, sixty thousand dollars is going to cost us. This year we're going to. This time we're going to put the tanks above ground. It'll have a self-containment area um, and make it a little bit easier and cleaner yep. to get that. That way you can see if anything's yep. the problem. Okay. All right. Um, the town offices. Since I've been here, and I think even before that, the town uh, board of selectmen have talked about 
improving our ADA compliance yes. in, in this building. Uh, we don't have an elevator. Uh, most people who in town who have been here know we have a chairlift, which is quite old, harder and harder to get parts on. Uh, we met with a company called Alpha One, who does handicap accessibility uh, reviews, uh, if you ask. And uh, so we asked them to come out, and we have a lot of areas here in the building that need to be addressed. Uh, so th they are going to give us a list of what we need to do, and, and we're going to look at putting a, a ramp into the second floor versus an elevator. Elevator can cost upwards of 200000 um, I don't believe uh, putting a ramp in, up would be that expensive, but we've yet to see the cost of that. Right. And we looked at different parts of the building. So uh, we've uh, added in the parking lot, a, uh, handicap accessibility parking mm -hmm. more than we have, which is good. But then when you get over here, if you have to get into the building, it's not really easy and doesn't meet the ADA compliance uh, standards that are in place today. So we're, we're trying to improve that, and uh, I'm excited about that. Um, and I'm going to push to make sure it blends in with the building if we do a ramp so it looks really uh, like it's been there forever. Oh, and you go you'd be able to get into the auditorium for voting much easier. Right, that's what I was just thinking, is it, when they have to get into the auditorium, taking that lift up is just oh, it's dangerous. Hard. And some of the chairs don't fit. Yeah, some of the chairs don't fit. And we had to break down when we had a, the Legion did a community dinner here. And a 90-year-old man had a very difficult time getting upstairs. And we need to fix that. Yeah. Um, the auditorium floor was finished today. We had it all sanded. It's absolutely gorgeous. Smells a little bit right now up <laughs> on that floor, but uh, it will be dry by tomorrow. And then it will sit for hopefully uh, two or three weeks to harden up good and solid. And if you get a chance and you're upstairs, come look at it. Absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm excited about that. So. And how long do they say that will last? I mean, I don't know how often you have to do these floors. Yeah, this floor has been sanded before, from my understanding. And the company that did this said that we won't be able to sand it again at this point. So it's going to have uh, it has three coats of poly on it and another top fourth, fourth coat, uh, a little thicker. Uh, so that should last as long as we take care of it. Um, we looked at options of replacing the floor. That was some of the recommendations of the people who gave us prices. Uh, this company said you can probably get one more sanding out of it, which we did by the looks. Um, and uh, his said that we need to come back every um, three, two or three years, depending on how it's being worn, to take a look at it and then maybe put another coat down and we can just keep doing that for a while. So it should last quite a long time. And we were just talking upstairs about uh, in the gymnasiums and uh, like at Noble, they have a vinyl flooring yes. that when you have a lot of traffic, they put yep. over that. Yep. We're probably going to purchase some of those so we can cover the floor to keep yep. it well and keep it good. So kind of like a new house. You put put in the, uh, what is it, the rolled out cardboard or yeah. something for people to walk in. Yeah. Yep. Very similar. So that, okay. that will work well. So those are just some of the things that are going on. We all get to see it during the farmer's market and some of the upcoming events that oh, we've yeah. got going on. Yeah, we have the theater group coming in, I think, in December yeah, to do some uh, uh, Christmas plays and not things. So uh, take advantage. Yeah. Come see the floors. Come see the theater group. Come to the farmer's market. Um, we have... Um, a scrapbooking affair that's happening? Well, it's supposed to happen in two weeks. So this weekend was supposed to be the auxiliary um, craft fair. Okay. So they'll be here um, in the first floor, and then the week after, it was the Legion Riders were doing the scrapbooking. That's right, yeah. So, um, yeah, both of those slides, as a matter of fact, our slides run every three hours on the hour. Yep. So if you check out our slideshow, you'll see all of the upcoming events. All right, well, I think we're all caught up yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you for joining us, and we will see you again with updates from the town manager's desk.